Hello. So uh, the wire generator is getting a new feature because by default, it just does this. It's not terribly interesting. And sure, if you spend some more time creating more of these primitive volumes and positioning them in uh, more interesting ways, you can get a more complex curve system, sure. But we now have this option right here called intermediate volumes. So pretend that this is our ceiling and we just want to create some hanging cables. We can just turn this option on and then change the strength of this and we already have hanging cables. But the orientation of these handles might not be ideal. They're set to automatic by default and maybe you want these end handles to be oriented like this or like this. And we now have options to do that. So we can change this to aligned and now all of the curve handles are aligned to a flat axis or single axis per set. And the alignment also has options. So by default, we get auto align, which does this. So if you have very little sag, horizontal handles are going to prevail. But if we move this down, notice how the handles start rotating just to better fit the, the direction that you're moving in. So that's pretty neat. But sometimes you might want this level of a sag that's like somewhere in between. And now you're getting both horizontal and vertical handles. But like I said, we have tons of options that we can choose from. We can sort of force the tool to do what we want. We can change, for instance, uh, the alignment to be vertical. So no matter how little sag we have, the end handles are always vertical. And we can do something similar with uh, horizontal. Now, there are a few issues when you try to uh, guess or find the best handle that the, that the, or like the orient flattening axis. I don't know what else to call it, but let me just demonstrate because it's hard to uh, explain. So let's see if we can make our tool misbehave by putting this cube over here. That should be about right, I think, hopefully. So let's just try running the tool again. And hey, we did it. This is what I wanted to demonstrate. So the tool is working as intended. It's finding the best axis and flattening the handle to that axis for each one of these curve points, but they don't always match each other. So maybe in the future we can sort of make the curve points look at each other and say, hey, I want all of you to face the same, uh, the same direction or something like that. But for now, we can just, like I said, just use one of these uh, extra options. We can just force it to be X all the time. And uh, oh yeah, another improvement that we didn't have before is now that we're using these align handles, we can also do this. So if I rotate this, notice how the handles are also rotating with the primitive. So in previous versions of Curve Basher, we would have something that was more like this. So I would rotate the cube and that would happen and we could scale it, sure, but the handles never followed the rotation, but now they do, which I think is pretty cool because it makes just uh, positioning all of these curves much more easy. So let me also uh, select all of these cubes. No, no, you, you, and you. Okay, cool. And uh, let's maybe change this like this and shrink them a wee bit. And also scale these. No, there we go. Do something like that. So it doesn't take too long to create a more complex curve system now. And as usual, we can select all of them and replace them by pressing J and then just scrolling to uh, a different preset. I'm just gonna go with the chains because I like the chains. Hold on Alt, randomize, something like this. Cool. So yeah, it's not ready yet, but we're getting there. Just in a few more days, I think. Just trying to make sure that all the tools do everything I want them to for, uh, or everything that I planned for uh, the 1.3 release.